Hey everyone, it's Jana from The Long Stitch. A while back I held some sewing classes in person and one of those classes was about how to sew an activewear top using really stretchy knit fabrics and these can actually be a bit tricky so I thought it would be fun and hopefully useful to also do a video where I share my top tips for how to really be successful when it comes to sewing a knit top in stretchy fabrics. When you're sewing knit tops, there are a couple of things that I think is really important to know. First of all, you tend to always need to stabilize the shoulder seams. The, the fabric is usually such a lot crosswise, right? And also cut slightly slanted. So if you don't stabilize the shoulder seam, you do run a risk of having the shoulder seam to stretch out. So all of a sudden, the shoulder will extend outside uh, your um, top of your shoulder, which Sometimes it's not a look you after, which is why it's so important to stabilize the shoulder seam. In this case, I use clear elastic. And if you're curious on all the ways you can stabilize the shoulder seam, you can actually check out a video that I've done that only talks about this particular topic. Of course, link will be down below in the description section. And in this case, as I said, I use clear elastic. So you can see it has a nice amount of stretch. And why I'm so fond of using clear elastic is because it does have similar stretch properties to a lot of four-way stretch um, knit fabrics. So this is why I use that one. And another tip when you're sewing the shoulder is to always fold the seam allowance backwards. So you, first of all, you attach the stabilizing on the shoulder, on the back piece of the shoulder, and then you fold the entire seam allowance backwards. And so you check a lot of red wear garment you will see that this is how a knit tops or t-shirts are generally made so this is something i highly recommend that you do when you're sewing knit tops now for the sewing order when you're sewing knit tops i always start with the shoulder seams then i sew the neckline the reason for that is because sometimes when you handle the fabric the neckline can get a little bit stretched out and it's also more difficult to control once you have done all the other pieces in place if that makes sense so that is why I always, always recommend that as soon as you sew on the shoulder, if you are sewing both shoulders like this, then you finish your neckline. In this case, I am using ribbing. Now, ribbing can be easy, can be difficult to attach. It kind of depends on what type of ribbing you're using and your experience with sewing with knits. Um, some general tips here is, first of all, ribbing should always be shorter, uh, in length than the actual neckline measurement. In this case, the ribbing is 75% of the finished neckline of the garment fabric. The reason for that is because when you stretch out the ribbing, that's how you make it lie flat. So if you have a problem when you're sewing knit tops, uh, that the neckline kind of flips out like this, uh, that means you haven't stretched the ribbing as much as you should have. Had. Unless that's a look where you're going for. Sometimes you, you want to do that, but in most cases we do like to have our ribbing to nice, lie nice and flat like this. Another challenge when attaching ribbing on the tops is to make sure that the negative ease is distributed evenly across the entire neckline. As I said, ribbing will always be shorter than neckline, which means you need to stretch out the ribbing when you're attaching the neckline. So there are several different ways of doing it. One common way is to divide the entire circumference here in four exactly the same length and then you do the ribbing in four exactly the same length. So that's one method uh, which doesn't really require any calculations but I actually prefer a method that's a bit more exact and that is that I take, measure the distances between the shoulder seams and the mid front, the shoulder seam and the mid back and then I calculate what is that distance divided by 75%, which means that I create a similar distance on the ribbing that is 75% of this length. And then I stretch that out and match. And that gives, in my opinion, the most precise attachment of ribbing that you can imagine. It doesn't really have to be too difficult. You just use a calculator on your mobile phone to calculate what is, say, 15 centimeters um, times 75% and then you get the right distance and you do that on your ribbing and then you just match up those notches and I will say that you will probably be very very happy with how that end result looks like. Now when you are attaching ribbing or any type of fabric at the neckline you do want to avoid bulk at any cost especially because you usually tend to stitch down the ribbing 
um, on the fabric, stitch down the seam allowance, and then you really want to make sure you don't have a lot of bulk. So what I like to recommend is that first of all, you place the seam of the circle of the ribbing not at the exact same spot as the shoulder seam. Instead, you place it about one centimeter in back to the, on the back side, just to make it more discreet, because then you will have no double area for the sewing machine or the cover stitch machine to sew over once you stitch down the ribbing, which again is something that will provide a really neat finish. Another tip if you are having problem with bulk is actually to use this type of hammer, which is a really good one. It doesn't ruin the fabric in any way. Just give the seam allowance a gentle beating like this, and that will actually make a massive difference, and it won't alter the fabric, but it will keep the seam allowance flat and nice, and make them so much easier to stitch over. So that's another tip that I recommend when it comes to removing bulk when you're sewing knit tops. The final step when it comes to ribbing or self fabric for the neckline is that you stitch the seam allowance down. You can either stitch both rows over the seam allowance, you can straddle the stitch so you have one stitch on the uh, ribbing and then you have one stitch on the actual fabric of the bodice. You can choose what you like and if you want to learn more about these techniques you can also check out my books both sewing activewear and my book Master the Cover Stitch Machine talks about how to best stitch down the necklines and what type of method you can use for it. So if you're curious, I highly recommend that you check out my books for even more instructions when it comes to finishing the neckline in a really beautiful manner like this one. Now, now we're down the shoulder seams and the neckline and it's time to attach the sleeves. If some of you remember in the good old days or in the bad old days, a lot of sewing pattern instructions had you make attaching sleeves into knit tops the same way as you would do a woven top. So you would actually sew together sleeve a circle, you would sew the side seam and then attach it already on the round like this. But that is a really bad idea when you're sewing knit tops. And the reason for that is it just is so much harder attaching it. So instead I highly recommend you do it on the flat, which means that you don't sew the side seams, you don't sew the sleeve seam instead you leave the garment open like this and you attach the sleeve and then when you've done that start sewing from the bottom of the bodice you stitch all the way up and the entire way until the sleeve ends so you do all that in one swoop and that is so easy so quick and that's also how it's done in the garment industry also when it comes to hemming there are basically two ways you can do that you can either hem the sleeve before you actually attach it to the sleeve opening. Uh, that is especially good if you are using a cover stitch machine and are sewing very narrow hems like this one because uh, using a cover stitch machine is actually quite hard to sew on the round uh, because it usually is flat bed. So this one is actually I first hem the sleeve and then I stitch it together. This I recommend but when you're doing t-shirts or if you're using a sewing machine the opening is probably wide enough so that you're able to actually hem it after you attach the sleeve and sew the entire side seam here. So now all that remains is hemming. Now I've done several videos concerning hemming. One that I highly recommend if you only have a sewing machine. Of course that will also be linked to in the description section. I also have several videos on how to hem using a cover stitch machine and to secure it. So again, a lot of that information you can easily find in my other older videos. But I will give you some quick tips when it comes to hemming. First of all, again, it's really nice to remove some bark, which is why I recommend that if your seam can handle it, and you usually can if you're using a secure overlock seam, is to cut a little snip in the fabric and then fold the seam allowance in opposite direction so they will not overlap. That removes a lot of bark, especially when you're using a cover stitch machine. That can actually cause some problems if you have a too elevated side seam where the machine has problem fading over it and that really also pertains when you're using um, a regular sewing machine. So I highly recommend that you use the flip seam allowance method if your stitch can handle it. Another common situation is to get tunneling which is basically those slightly bumps between the two rows of stitches. This is especially common when you're using a twin needle on a sewing machine and to be honest it's kind of 
hard to avoid on some fabrics, especially if you're sewing very thin fabrics. I do have a lot of tips in my aforementioned video about how to hem knits using a regular sewing machine. I talk about the virtue of stabilizing the fabric with using some type of wash away stabilizer. You can also experiment with the tension settings to make sure that the seam lies more flat. That can be really helpful as well. Which brings me to a big point. Sometimes I feel that there is a too much focus on 100% perfection when it comes to stitching. And to be honest, if you look at ready to wear knit garments as well, you will often see that they also have this kind of things that I'm talking about right now, because it's, sometimes it's really hard to avoid, especially on those fabrics that are kind of tricky. So, so don't beat yourself over if you cannot achieve a perfect finish on everything, especially when you're using your own home sewing equipment. Yeah, sometimes I feel we get too obsessed about the end result. Rant over, I promise, but I just want to get that off my chest, that I do believe that we should be kind to ourselves and do understand that the sewing with really stretchy, thin fabrics, well, it is challenging, it isn't easy. So don't beat yourself over if the result is not like perfect in your mind, because I think you did a fabulous job. So remember that when you are struggling with sewing with knits. Wow, this was a lot of information in one video. I hope you that you've still found it useful. And if you have any questions, please ask away in the comment section. And if you want to learn more about me, I recommend you go head over to my website, thelaststitch.com, where I have so many tutorials about sewing with knits, especially knit tops. So if you're curious, check that website out. And of course, please subscribe for weekly sewing videos. Stitch safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!